God, we came to hail our King Jesus. And once again, we welcome you to our service. We've got some favorite people who moved up to Seattle, Siri and George. And we welcome you to our service. What a happy surprise I got to hear that they brought me some goodies. And uh, we're going to have lunch with them, those of you who are friends of theirs. And I reserve the parts of a the old Asian cuisine. I think it's called Kelly's now. If you want to have lunch with us right after on the service, just go there and join our group. And especially if you're friends with them, they're not here for a very long time. We're glad to have Pastor David again. Every time he comes in service, we're glad because we know he's always watching us on Facebook we get, because he gives me some comments. But welcome, everyone. It is a special service. We've been talking about Jesus coming soon. And if you're a new person watching in or new in the service, we want you to know that the Bible is God's plan for this planet. In the beginning, God created it. And the Bible tells us what his plan has been, how man interrupted it with his obedience to Satan at, in the Garden of Eden. But there is coming an end. And there are signs of the end times. And we said that the calendar for the end days began when Israel became a nation in 1948. And we've been going over some of the prophetic things that are happening so that when you watch the television news or read the newspaper and see these names or see these subjects, you know that the prophecy is being fulfilled as God's eternal word has laid out for us. So it's time to be alert, time to be awake, time to be involved and occupy in God's work because Jesus is coming very soon. Let's welcome his presence. Let's stand. There's so many people in need. We need to pray for Eleanor today, and we need to pray for the family. We need to pray for Gary Ohashi. We're continuing to pray for him and having to work out things so that he can uh, be settled in a place. Uh, they're working the logistics of all of that with the social worker, and there's so many things that are involved. So pray for peace in that. And we want us also to pray for Mike. Uh, he said he was injured. He's not on the platform. You know what? They ca called me this morning and said, Mike can't come. He injured his ankle and he cannot wear his pants. <laughs> I said, if he cannot wear his pants, he cannot come <laughs> to service. <laughs> what they meant was he's going to wear shorts. And I said, well, if his ankle is that bad, maybe he should just take a risk. But he's here. We thank you for coming, Michael, and wearing your shorts at least. Amen. Let's welcome the presence of the Lord. The Lord wants to meet with us here today. And he's going to come if you welcome him and open your heart to him wherever you are. We pray that you will open your heart and let God have his way. Let us pray. Our gracious Heavenly Father, we're so glad that we are family. And we're getting anxious to see you. But Lord, we know that we have work to do and we've come to Day to hear more about it. We thank you for our special guests. We pray, Lord, that wherever we are, you'll make it a holy place so you can do your eternal holy work in us. Be with us in our service today. Receive our worship. We pray for those who cannot be here. We pray for Eleanor and her family. We pray for Gary and all the things that are involved in his life. We pray for peace. We're so glad that he has surrendered himself to you, so you're his father, you're gonna take care of him. And we're grateful for our blessings, Lord. We thank you for our health and strength. We pray for Bishop Serda's wife, our bishop in the Philippines, who had to go to Rome to be with her son so she can get treatment there, since she is a citizen there now that she's opened a church, but heal her. We lift her up and encourage Bishop, Lord, and the people in the Philippines, we send our love to them. Overflow us with your spirit today. We're expecting you to do exceedingly abundantly above all that we can ask or even think according to that power that works in us. And so we worship you. Receive our worship and praise in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Turn it over to Milton, and he's going to lead us in praise songs. You can sit down if you like. Or stand up and jump around as the song requires or suggests. Hey, Amen. Amen. Actually, you may be seated because uh, this is Youth Sunday. So uh, if you miss uh, Friday night, uh, we have our service on Friday night for the youth. Um, I had the opportunity to speak again. And I spoke about my cat. Praise God. <laughs> you may think, 
Why are you speaking about a cat? Well, you know, when Carol asked me to switch with Pastor Becca next week, uh, this, well, this coming Friday, um, we have to kind of prepare for my brother's uh, funeral service on Saturday. So I thought that's a good idea. So I asked the Lord, Lord, what can I speak on? And the Lord said, why don't you speak on your cat? I said, okay, that's easy, but how? Well, related to me, and praise God, I did. So if you want to know what I said, look on Facebook on Friday night. And basically what it is about is that, you know, when you own a kitten at that time, now it's pretty big now, it's like an adult cat, actually. I, we had it for about four or five months. And um, the Lord told me it takes a lot of responsibility to own anything you got to nurture it, you have to feed it, you have to clean its uh, litter, you have to play with it, you've got to all these things. It takes a real commitment, and that's how the Lord is. It takes a commitment on his part to leave his home in glory, to come down on earth, become a little baby, and not give up when he was tempted, tortured, but go all the way to the cross. Because the Bible says, I believe in Hebrews 12 too, that because of the joy that was set before him, he endured the cross. It takes a lot of commitment that he did. And the joy that he saw was you and I. Praise yes. God. Hallelujah. And there's a song, young people. This is for you. Uh, those of you who are watching on Facebook, we sang this song many, many times. And it's called the B-I-B-L-E. Now, that's uh, three verses that we're going to sing. But the Bible is so important. Someone said... What does the Bible stand for? Well, it says basic instructions before, we, before leaving earth, B-I-B-L-E, and that is true. The Bible should not be on your shelf. It should not be on your bookcase or on your table. It should be in front of your reading it, praise God. And that's how we gain strength and stay close to the Lord. So this song, the B-I-B-L-E, now if you can, please sing along with us, unless you want me to sing a solo with uh, James and uh, uh, Pam. That kind of sounds funny, though, singing a solo with P James and uh, Pam. But anyway, here we go. The B-I-B-L-E. The B-I-B-L-E. Yes, that's the book for me. I stand alone on the Word of God. The B-I-B-L-E. God's Word will never fail. Never fail. Never fail, God's word will never fail. No, no, no. The B I B L E. That's how God speaks to me. He tells me how He set me free through Jesus Christ in me. Jesus will never fail. Never fail. Never fail, Jesus will never fail. No, 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 the B I B L E. That's God's word for me. John 3 16, God gave his son salvation's love for me. I live eternally, eternally, eternally. I live eternally in glory. Verse number three again. The B I B L E. That's God's, God's word for me. He tells me that God gave His Son salvation, love for me. I live eternally, forever be Jesus and me. I live eternally in glory. Praise God. Hallelujah. John 3, 16. For God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son that whosoever, that's me, that's you, James, that's, that's you, Pam, that's all of you, that whosoever believe it on Jesus shall not, shall not perish but have Wonderful, great, eternal life in heaven. Praise God. Well, every praise does go to the Lord, right? Everything that we do, whether we're working, whether we're playing, whether we're singing, every praise should go to the Lord. So sing with us every praise. 
Every praise is to our God, every word of worship with one accord. Every praise, every praise is to our God. Hallelujah to our God, glory hallelujah is to our God. Every praise, every praise is to our God. Every praise is to our God, every word of worship with one accord. Every praise, every praise is to our God. Sing hallelujah to our God, glory hallelujah is to our God. Every praise, every praise is to our God. Every praise is to our God, every word of worship with one accord. Every praise, every praise is to our God. Sing hallelujah to our God, glory hallelujah is to our God. Every praise, every praise is to our God. God my Savior, God my Healer, God my Deliverer, yes He is, yes He is. God my Savior, God my Healer, God my Deliverer, yes He is, yes He is, yes He is. Yes, He is. Every praise is to our God. Every word of worship with one accord. Every praise, every praise, every praise, every praise, every praise, every praise is to our God. Amen. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. That's what you're doing right now. You're praising God with a clap of clapping of your hands. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Every praise should go to our God for he has done so much for us. You know, pastor said something very interesting this morning that the world is coming to the end, to, to the end and we don't know when exactly that is, but we need to be prepared. But isn't it wonderful when you have Jesus in your life? It doesn't matter because one of these days we will be caught up there with the Lord never to have any of this wearing of the mask. With this pandemic, <laughs> or wearing a shield, have to be six feet or three feet apart, be sick, be tormented. There's no fighting, but it's going to be a glorious day in glory land. Amen. So let's sing this song just over in the glory land. A home prepared where the saints abide just over in the glory land and i long to be by my savior's side just over in the glory land just over in the glory land i'll join the happy angel band just over in the glory land just over in the glory the mighty host now stand just over in the glory land. I'm on my way to the dungeon fair just over in the glory land. There to sing God's praise and His glory share just over in the glory land. Just over in the glory land I'll join the happy angel band just over in the glory land just over in the glory land there with the mighty hosts i stand just over in the glory land what a joyful thought that my lord i'll see just over in the glory land and with kindred say there forever be just over in the glory land just over in the glory land I'll join the happy angel band Just over in the glory land 
us over in the glory land there with the mighty host sound stand just over in the glory land with the blood was strong I will shout and sing just over in the glory land that hosannas to praise the Lord and King just over in the glory land just over in the glory land I'll join the happy angel band just over in the glory land just over in the glory land there with the mighty host I'll stand just over in the glory land there's going to be a meeting in the air in the sweet, sweet by and by. Oh, how I long to meet you over there, away beyond the sky. Such singing you will hear, never heard by mortal ear. There will be glorious set to declare. For God's own Son will be the leading one in the meeting in the air. There's going to be a meeting in the air, in the sweet, sweet by and by. Oh, how I long to meet you over there, away beyond the sky. Such singing you will hear, never heard by mortal ear, will be glorious said to declare. For God's own Son will be the leading one in the meeting in the air. Going to be a meeting in the air in the sweet, sweet by and by. Oh, how I long to meet you over there, away beyond the sky. Such singing you will hear, never heard by mortal ear, will be glorious said to declare. For God's own Son will be the leading one in the meeting in the air. When we all get to heaven, what a day of rejoicing that will be. When we all see Jesus, we'll sing and shout the victory. When we all get to heaven, what a day of rejoicing that will be. When we all see Jesus, we'll sing and shout the victory. When we all get to heaven, what a day of rejoicing that will be. When we all see Jesus, we'll sing and shout the victory. When we all see Jesus, we'll sing and shout the victory. Hear a shout of victory right now. Are you on the way to heaven? Amen. The future of every Christian gets brighter and brighter. I don't care how your situation may be. Alan was giving me his testimony. He had been drug ridden and left with the effects of drug, but he found Jesus, or Jesus found him, and he's sitting, sitting there now for months, faithful to the Lord. And when we get to heaven, we're not going to have all of these handicaps of old age like we are beginning to have. It's going to be wonderful. But I don't want to go on the first bus ride. You know what I'm saying? I'd like to stay here and occupy. Well, today we have guest speakers, and so I want to, before Howard comes, to say that we usually take a love offering for them. You know, when they come and say they're going to do ministry in Hawaii, all of the supporters, they say, oh, yeah, right. Ministry in Hawaii, ministry in Maui. But they have a faith mission and a great min ministry now that started just like the Door of Faith did many years ago, very humbly. But God has then put his hand on it and it's become a worldwide ministry. But they live by faith. We're glad that our church is able to provide the guest rooms that we have prepared for our guests and provide a car because uh, uh, we were given a car uh, to do that. But they need some spending money, right? And so I'd like for you, as we say in our church, whenever we have a need, I'm responsible to present the need, and you're responsible to pray and ask God what to give. We're not asking 
for anything but what God lays on your heart. And sometimes he'll tell you $50, sometimes he'll tell you $1. But obedience brings the anointing. The anointing brings the miracles. So we pray that you will be obedient. And also, we have only one air conditioning unit. We have two major ones. And we paid for the first. We are receiving the second, and it's going to cost us $20,000 by the time we get finished. So if you feel led to contribute to that, uh, you can designate it on the bottom. If it's a love offering, you can just say love offering, and we will designate it to the um, people that you want it to go to. So anyway, we're glad to have Howard to come and say the blessing, because I'm sure, as he gave testimony last week, that he is one that has trusted God. And so Howard, come and say your scripture or whatever you have in your heart and say the blessing. Amen. Good morning. In Matthew uh, 6, 19, he says, Do not lay up yourself treasures on earth where moth and rust destroys and where thieves break in and steal. But lay up yourself treasures in heaven where neither moth moth nor rust destroys wherever thieves do not break in and steal for where your heart where your treasure is there is your heart let us pray father we just thank you for our special guests we ask that you bless them and always supply their needs we ask that you bless the gift as well as the giver and let it be used to glorify your kingdom we invite your spirit to be with us this morning, Lord, as we commit ourselves to you. We just thank you and praise you. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. we said that God's word, the Bible, is a blueprint for this planet. In the beginning, God created the heavens and the earth. In the book of Revelation, the last book in the Bible, it says there's going to be a new heaven and a new earth. Everything in between he has planned out. 
And so if you read the Bible, you know what the world news is saying. And this is part of our series. But all, more than that, what that song they just played says is his word, if we hide it in our heart, we will not sin against him. This morning, I just want to take a minute to pray for a dear son of mine, spiritual son who's struggling. He's a pastor. And the word I have for him, wherever he is today, is to be still and know that God is God. Not to be discouraged, not to be the king of his life, but today is the Lord's day, wherever you are. And there might be others that are struggling with decisions. And you might be anxious and ready to make a quick decision. Let me tell you this. The Holy Spirit leads us. He doesn't push us. The devil pushes us, sets deadlines, makes us anxious. Don't move unless you have the peace of God. And so, Father, you know this precious one who has good intentions, but, Lord, we want God intentions. I pray that you will still his heart wherever he is. Your word is alive and powerful. And I know that he has your word hidden in his heart. Let him take time just to lay aside everything and just trust you to lead him. Holy Spirit, comfort and strengthen him. And Father, I pray that he will have new revelations from you as he is still before you and others who are struggling with important decisions about relationships, about jobs, about finances. I sense the need for the peace of God this morning. Lord, you said you've got a peace that you will give us that the world did not give and neither can the world take away. So as we come and worship you this morning, let us cast aside every thought and every high thing that exalts itself against your mind and bring every thought into the captivity of Jesus Christ. Holy Spirit, help us. We're weak. We're distracted. We're burdened. We're anxious. But we ask for your peace as we worship you now in spirit and in truth. In Jesus' name, amen. He is Lord, He is Lord, He is risen from the dead, and He is Lord, every Shall bow every tongue confess that Jesus Christ is Lord. Let's sing that verse again. He is Lord. He is Lord, He has risen from the dead, and He is Lord, every knee shall bow, every tongue That Jesus Christ is Lord. You are Lord. You are Lord. You have risen from the dead 
and you are Lord. Every knee shall bow, every tongue confess that Jesus, you are Lord. You alone are holy. You alone, you alone, you alone are holy. You I worship you, I worship you, and I lift my hands and worship you, I worship you alone, you alone are holy, you
I worship you, Almighty God. There is none like you. He is Lord. He is Lord. He is risen from the dead, and He is Lord. Every Shall bow every time confess that Jesus Christ is Lord. Just sing it out to Him this morning. You are Lord. worship service we've come to worship him tell him how much you love him hallelujah we thank you for your presence here lord we love you lord jesus we love you the cloud of god's glory is here this morning he is making alive your heart and your relationship. Surrender all to him. Surrender all to him. He will give you the desires of your heart if you first surrender all to him. And Father, it's difficult sometimes when we've been in control of our own lives, but today, through your Holy Spirit, change us, melt us. Help us to see the glory of surrendering to you. Touch everyone, Lord. There's somebody who has been diagnosed with liver cancer, and God is healing you right now in the name of Jesus. Be healed. Somebody with ringing of your ears, receive a healing from him in the name of Jesus. Somebody with suicidal thoughts. Oh, Father, we bind the spirit of death. that has been like fiery darts across our island, across our state, across our nation. I bind the spirit of suicide in Jesus' name. I pray for peace to come. Stillness of heart. Oh, Father, let this one know how much you love him. In Jesus' name, pour out your love and grace. Let him know that you've touched his life, her life, whoever it is, Lord. They're lonely. They're confused. They're in despair. But, Jesus, you've come to give them hope and give them life. I bind the spirit of death in Jesus' name. I speak life to those who are weak and weary. Wait upon the Lord. He shall renew your strength. Wait, I say, on the Lord. Thank you, Jesus. 
somebody with sores in your mouth, God is healing that right now. In Jesus' name, receive that healing. Somebody with a crick in your neck, you might have slipped wrong or it's been maybe a constant thing. Be healed in Jesus' name. Jesus was wounded for our transgressions. He was bruised for our iniquities. The chastisement of our peace was upon him. And by the stripes that he bore on that cross, he purchased our wholeness in body, soul, and spirit. It's yours if you believe. It's yours if you receive, because he's already paid for it. Receive all that you need from the Lord, because he said he will supply all your need according to his riches in glory by Christ Jesus. And because he paid for it, it's legally yours in his name. Give him praise and glory this morning. Give him praise and glory in Jesus' name. Thank you, Jesus. Amen. Amen. Isn't it wonderful to be in the presence of Jesus? He's here. Isn't it awesome? I don't know how far you came to be here. I know George and Siri came from Seattle. I know they're happy to be here because they brought me a lot of goodies. And so anyway, but it's better to be in the presence of Jesus wherever you are. He's in your heart. It's never far away. Never forget that. And there's somebody who's been drifting away from God and you feel so alone and you think Jesus is not going to take you back. He's calling your name right now. You're not tuning in for any reason but that he's calling your name. Listen to him. Surrender to him. In Jesus' name, amen. Thank you, Jesus. Well, we'll be talking about the second coming and the signs of Jesus' return. We said that the Bible written by about 40 holy men over a period of about 15, 1,600 years from three different continents, different cultures, but with the same spirit of God, wrote the 66 books in the Bible. And it's God's story and plan for this planet. In the beginning, God created the heavens and earth. And I said, once you settle that and believe that he is the creator, all the other miracles, you know, can happen. If he created everything, he can fix everything, right? And so we're odd. There was a beginning, and we're talking about there is coming very speedily the end. Do you feel that acceleration? I cannot believe that it's almost going to be the end of July. I was wondering if it only happened to old people. But I think some of you young people admit that too. But today, we're blessed. We're talking about one of the prophecies being fulfilled is that the gospel will be published or spread across the world. I say to every young person, you know, if I had my chance to live again my life, I would join this organization and be a part of it with some kind of skill I have. They, they have opportunities for just about any skill, and especially those young people who like to play with your cell phone and your technological geniuses. You know, think about it. So exciting to be. I said, like I told you, you know, like the uh, 440 race around the track. They got four runners. The first one is kind of speedy, and he goes to the second and third and fourth. And I said, I believe we're the anchor person, the one that's going to be the fastest and the strongest, and we're going to take it across the finish line because Jesus is coming soon. And this organization, Faith Comes by Hearing, is, I think, holding the baton right now. And Scott, we're so glad to have you. Scott Nutter and his wife, Lori. Lori spent 10 years on Oahu, so she has some friends in Hawaii, and she's interpreting pidgin English for Scott. And you know, I don't know, Scott, if you know that the Bible has been 
uh, translate it into Pigeon English. Anyway, Scott, come and tell us a little bit about yourself and pay attention, don't fall asleep. It is so exciting. He's going to get us all involved in what is the cutting edge of spreading the gospel of Jesus Christ before Jesus comes. Amen. He made from one man every nation of mankind to live on all the face of the earth. Having determined allotted periods and boundaries of their dwelling place, that they should seek God. And perhaps feel their way toward him and find him. Yet he is not far from each one of us. Earth's population numbers in the billions and continues to grow. There are over 7,000 languages spoken around the world. 70% of all humanity live in oral communities and 50% cannot read at a functional level. Christ tells us that his gospel will be proclaimed throughout the entire world as a testimony to all nations before the end. But how? Alone, the monumental task of delivering God's word in the heart language of every people group on earth would not be possible. But we are not alone. Faith Comes by Hearing has partnered with the worldwide translation community in a movement to finish the task and ensure that everyone on earth has access to God's Word in a format they can understand by the year 2033. We're committed to doing our part by recording scripture and creating listening programs for oral communities around the world. After two millennia, in an unprecedented time of unity within the body of Christ, we can finally see the Great Commission fulfilled in our generation. This movement cannot be stopped, and there is an opportunity for each one of us to be a part of it. This is it, the final sprint. Join the movement. Vision 2033. Well, good morning. B-I-B-L-E, that's the book for me. That should be the ministry theme song, I think. I'm going to take that back to our leadership. Um, what a blessing to be here. Thank you, Pastor Barbara, the church. Uh, you've made us uh, feel at home. And uh, truly, it is a homecoming for my wife, Lori. Uh, she did spend 10 years, grew up in Oahu, and uh, just, uh, um, just loves uh, the islands and the culture. Um, she says, uh, you know, 31 years ago when we got married, I'm pretty simple. Just take me back to Hawaii whenever you can. So, so here we are. Um, and it is a true blessing to get to partner with your church. And uh, those of you on, on Facebook, on the Internet, thank you for joining us. Um, and uh, we are all praying that this uh, COVID would just, just uh, the Lord would just move it along. But it is, you know, it is teaching us some things on, and some things how to do ministry and uh, doing things a little bit different. So, you know, you saw in our video, Vision 2033, having the gospel available to every single person on earth by the year 2033. We're going to talk about that a little bit, but, you know, 7.6 billion people live in the world right now. There's over 7,000 languages. But, uh, you know, the, the Great Commission was given to us over 2,000 years ago, and, and, and it was given to the church. It was given to all of us. You know, as, as Christ was ready to ascend, he said, go and make disciples of all nations, baptizing them in the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit, teaching them to obey everything I've commanded you. That's in Matthew 28, 18. You know, and when we think about what is kind of holding things up? Um, has a church really embraced the Great Commission over these 2,000 years? Uh, Hudson Taylor says the Great Commission is not an option to be considered. It is a command to be obeyed. And, and I heard it said at a conference a few weeks ago, the Great Commission is not the big suggestion. It's the Great Commission. You know, the Great Commission, even the disciples in, in 16, 20, Matthew 28, 16 through 20, again, they, then even the disciples went to Galilee, to the mountain where Jesus had told them to go. Verse 17, when they saw him, they worshipped him, but some doubted. Some doubted. 
after they saw everything that had happened, then Jesus came to them and said, all authority in heaven and on earth has been given to me. Therefore, go and make disciples of all nations, baptizing them in the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit, and teaching them to obey everything I've commanded. And surely I'm with you always to the very end of the age. What an incredible promise for all of us. As I love what you're saying, that it is the blue, uh, blueprint. The Bible is the blueprint. And, you know, kind of the overlay. Um, I know you're preaching through, um, you know, prophecy. And think about Romans 10. And then how will they come, uh, how will they call on him that they have not believed? And how will they believe in him whom they have never heard? And how... And how are they to hear without someone preaching? And how are they to preach unless they are in sin? As it is written, how beautiful are the feet of those who preach the good news. But they have not all obeyed the gospel. For Isaiah says, Lord has believed what he has heard from us. So faith comes by hearing and hearing by the word of Christ. You know, I've heard it said, there is no plan B. You know, David Platt wrote a book, a really strong missions book called on radical and just getting people to move out of the church, out of the pulpit. And there is no plan B. He gave the great commission to us. So what are we doing with that? And then in Matthew 24, 14, it says, and this gospel of the kingdom will pro proclaim throughout the whole world as a testimony. And then the end will come. These are all promises. But what is holding us back over these 2,000 years of missions? There's over 7,200 languages of the world. Faith Comes by Hearing started this journey 50 years ago to record and make scripture available in every language group of the world. And, you know, our first five years, we were able to do five audio recordings of the New Testament. And we looked up and we said, wow, that's great. And then the professionals told us, the Bible translator said, there's over 7,000 more languages to go. And we thought, huh, how are we going to do this? Our ministry started uh, as a faith ministry, as Barbara said, um, in the back of a school bus, a 1958 school bus. Jerry and Annette Jackson founded the ministry. And in 1972, they went off to, to go do uh, ministry to the Hopi and Navajo nations uh, in the mainland in the southwest and the hippie communities of the 70. And they would go from city or town to town, pray over the town, and find a man or woman of peace that would bring them into their community, and they would share the gospel. When they pulled into Albuquerque, New Mexico, where our ministry is based, Jerry prayed over the city. And as you pull into Albuquerque, if, if you've been there, there's a, a long nine-mile hill. It goes into the Rio Grande Valley. It's very dry, very hot climate. But beyond that is a 10,000-foot mountain, it's, and it's called the Sandia Mountains, or, or watermelon, because at sunset, the mountains turn pink and red. It's a beautiful scene. But this is the base of the Sande de Cristo Mountains, and in Spanish, that is the blood of Christ. So our ministry is based in the Rio Grande Valley, right underneath the mountains of the blood of Christ. And Truly, the Lord brought Jerry and his wife, Annette, and their four children to Albuquerque. Jerry didn't want to stay there. He kept fighting with God. But God kept providing, kept doing ministry, and we started as a cassette tape lending library. Those of you that are um, over the age of 30, you probably know what a cassette tape is. So we started as a cassette tape lending library, distributing the Bible as part of our, of our whole video library. And missionaries started approaching Jerry and Annette saying, what about our people? Half of the people that we're doing ministry cannot read or write. Bible translators would come and they'd say, we've been translating the Bible for 30 years. We're ready to take it to, to our people, but they cannot read the work we've done. So we started doing our Bible audio translations um, close to 40 years ago now. Like I said, it took five years to do our first five. Now, today, about every three or four days, a new Bible comes online. It takes six months to do a complete audio recording, but every five days or so, a new Bible comes online. But what else is holding us back? We know 50% of the world's population cannot read well enough to understand the concepts of the Bible. 
That means 3.5 billion people are locked out of traditional scripture. Close to 70% of the world are what we call oral communicators. You know, you, you, they, they pass their traditions from, from mother to daughter or father to son in oral, oral, oral song and dance, very similar to the culture here. It's beautiful the way they pass, and it's word for word genealogy that goes all the way back to, to their ancestors. I said there's over 7,000 languages. Christians are being persecuted at a greater rate than any other time in history. Satan is holding, trying to hold things back. Gospel is outlawed in many countries that we know of. And over 2,000 languages, 2,000 people groups have zero access to the Bible right now. That means these people groups, they're born, they live their entire life, and they die, and they've never known the name of Jesus. But we have some more promises in Revelation. A great multitude from every nation, Revelation 7, 9. And after this, I look, and behold, a great multitude that no one could number from every nation, every tribe, all peoples, and the languages standing before the throne of the Lamb, clothed in white robes and palm branches in their hands, and crying out with a loud voice, Salvation belongs to our Lord, who sits on the throne and to the Lamb. About every four years, uh, this year it was five, the Olympics come along. And you watch the, the opening ceremony and all of those nations coming into the stadium. Think about what heaven's going to look like, okay? But they won't be carrying their country nation. They're going to be carrying the banner of Jesus with them and coming to see in all nations, every tribe, every tongue. It's an exciting time to be living in this time of the world. Have you ever thought about the great revivals and, and what had happened at that time? And were the people really understanding what was happening during that time? Well, we were in a meeting the other day, and, and one of our leaders, uh, we always pray and ask if God's given us any, any direction, any picture messages, uh, a word from the Lord. And he said, you know, in this time of the year 2021 and through Vision 2033, this next 10 years or so, we are a part of completing the Great Commission. We get to be a part. And people will look back and say, look what happened then. That the Great Commission is going to be fulfilled in our generation. Young people, this should be so exciting to you that you get to be a part of bringing technology, bringing God's word, leveraging everything you know, to the Lord. So Vision 2033, our basic mission statement is this, to partner with like-minded ministries to record scripture in every language of the world that needs it by the year 2033 and make these recordings freely available by every means possible. Faith comes by hearing. Our mission is simple. We take the Bible, we record it, and we make it freely available. That's all we do. Take it. We work hand-in-hand hand with all the Bible translation partners. If you're supporting a Bible translator, double your support for them. Because if they're not translating the Bible, we can't come along and do our recordings. Vision 2033 basically means at least a New Testament recording in the heart language of 99% of the people in the world. Now, the heart language, that's the language I always like to explain. That's the language that your mother rocked you to sleep in, the language you dream in, and the language your father disciplined you in. We know by doing ministry among heart language people, in their heart language, they may have a head knowledge, they may understand what we're talking about, but the heart language is what truly transforms man. Um, for me, I, I'm, I praise God that the Bible was translated to, for English for me. People died. They were, they were persecuted to translate that Bible for us. The remaining, at least one book, uh, the remaining 1%, some of you did the math real quick, 99%, what about the 1%, what about the one sheep? 
What are we doing about that? The book of scripture, at least a book of Luke or a book of John, a, a gospel film or a Jesus film in that. And every single language will have a gospel film. Faith Comes by Hearing is partnered with an organization called Lumo. So every time we do an audio recording, we produce at least one full gospel video to go along with what we're doing. And again, we make these freely available. So right now, the remaining languages, there's over 7,000. Right now, we have 1,478 audio recordings completed when I left the office last week. Every three or four days, it's hard to keep up, okay? But then there's going to be over 5,400 language groups that will be impacted by the year 2033. 1,478 languages we've already done. That means about 4,004 languages that we need to complete by the year 2033, and it's doable. This year, we plan to do over uh, uh, 212 audio recordings, and we're on task to do that. Uh, halfway through the year, our, our teams reported back. Even with COVID, even with the lockdowns, we've been able to get recordings done. We have right now 50 recording teams embedded in villages around the world. So, and that's a, that's a true prayer, prayer point for our ministry. These men and women, they're two-man teams. They'll go into a village. They'll go into a country. They're national workers. We only have one team from the U.S. But they'll go into an area. They'll do a research trip. They'll audition the 25 native speakers to do the 180 parts of a New Testament. It's 20 to 30 hours of recording time. They work six days a week, 12 hours days, and then once they've completed it, they send the, the recordings back to our offices in Albuquerque. But let me tell you the spirit of these, these men and women. We had teams uh, that left uh, Accra, Ghana, to head into the, uh, to the DRC, uh, Democratic Republic of Congo in Africa, uh, in February of last year, towards the end of February. We know what happened at the first part of March. The world shut down. Our team was, was quarantined in a, in a foreign country. What did they do? They kept doing the recording because no COVID broke out in that area. They kept recording, they kept recording. Then they called us up and they said, can you send us more recordings? This team, the, while they were quarantined, took uh, till September for them to get repatriated back to their home country. They did five language recordings while they were under quarantine. God, you know, we always said, we're saying around the office, not in spite of COVID, but because of COVID, we got five additional languages done in one, one area of the world that so desperately needed it. We have uh, other recording platforms too. We have a virtual recording platform so people can audition online and they can record the Bible from the comfort and safety of their home. We have uh, uh, another project called uh, Oral Bible Translation that uh, Faith Comes By Hearing pioneered uh, over these last five years. And we believe these remaining 2,000 language groups are going to be done through oral Bible translation, meaning you have people that cannot read or write, but they speak three or four different languages. We have the largest collection of Bibles in the world. And we built a software, a computer program that organizes this so they can listen to it in a language they understand, translate it immediately into a recording to the target group. I, I explain it this way. If I'm uh, speaking in Africa at a church, I don't write down my sermon notes and hand it to my translator and have him read it. I speak it, he hears it, and he translates it for you. So we've organized a computer system that will actually do that for us. So 2,000 or 212 languages, will you agree to pray with us that, that, that the Lord will be able to provide the, the funding and the safety and the teams and, and clear COVID out of the way? Never thought we'd say clear COVID out of the way. Never knew what that was two years ago. But we work with over 400 ministry partners around the world to be able to distribute the Word of God and to work with the Bible translation agencies. We work hand-in-hand -hand with Wycliffe Bible Translators. We have an open MOU with them, a memo of understanding. Every time they do a translation, we automatically come in and do an audio recording. It doesn't matter the size of the people group. Uh, as a matter of fact, we just dedicated a language uh, last month that had only 300 uh, native speakers of that language. So we do as much as we can for the 
at least the last, is what we do, a uh, people group as large as Mandarin Chinese. Now, once the Bible has been translated, what do we do? You know, do we just put it up on a shelf and say, here's the library, and this is what we did. But what we want to do is to be able to get the scriptures in the hands of workers, missionaries, churches around the world free of charge. We have a pretty cool bunch of little gadgets, if you will. I was explaining the other night. When you're building a house, you don't build an entire house with just a hammer. You have to have the right tool for the right job. <clears throat> But we have so much digital content. Originally, we started doing Faith Comes by Hearing with cassette tapes. We'd send those out into the Africa uh, jungle, and they'd have their boom box, and they'd start playing. But then the cassettes would get wind up, and they'd get destroyed. Then we started with uh, CDs, and those were OK. But you know, those of you that remember CDs, they wouldn't work very well here. Can you imagine taking them into a dusty, dry climate? So about 15 years ago, the Proclaimer, which was referenced in that video, was invented at our ministry through a time of three days of prayer and fasting. Um, our ministry came together, prayed, and our lead engineer, he was a Sandia National Labs engineer, came to our founder and said, put the prototype of the Proclaimer on his, on his desk. This is a self-contained unit, has solar panels, has a little crank on the side, and it's loud enough for about 500 people to hear clearly. Of course, I gave one of these to a to one of our church partners. Now, how many understood that language? No one? Yesterday at our meeting, one person in the meeting knew that language. That's the Farsi language for Iran. It was so neat. She, she lit up. She smiled. And, you know, that's what we see when we put a proclaimer into a village. I've taken them around the world. I've taken them to Africa, a couple African nations. I've taken them to Nepal. I've taken them to India. I've taken them to the Philippines. And every time I put one of these down in a village and I hit play, the group gathers. Because one, they have never ever heard anything in their mother tongue language. They may have seen uh, you know, shows or movies, maybe, in, in their trade language, but they've never ever heard anything in their language. I was in uh, Sierra Leone, West Africa. I was preaching at a church, a small little church, dirt floors out in the middle of the jungle, and, uh, and I would play the proclaimer, and I'd talk about it. After the service, a Muslim man who was listening outside the church, he wouldn't come in. They have open walls. Now, what happens is the Christians come into the church, but the Muslims will circle it because they want to hear the stories. They want to hear what's going on. What are the Christians doing? And this man came to me, and he said, you mean Jesus, you mean God loves me enough to learn my language? And I thought, huh, yeah, he does. God loves him enough to learn his language. But you know, I can tell a few other stories, but I brought a video today of a refugee camp in uh, uh, northern Uganda. Uh, it's the Bitty Bitty Refugee Camp. And uh, originally, about five years ago, because of the Civil War in Sudan, refugees started coming over into the Uganda border. Originally, this camp, they thought they would have about 10,000 people but to date, they started getting about 10,000 people a week. And to date, they have about a quarter of a million people. It's no longer a camp. It's called a refugee settlement. So I brought a video to show you the power and impact of the Proclaimer. I, I wish I could just go down to my village and put this before them and say, Oh, my brothers, sisters, please come. Come and listen to the word, to the of, word God. of God. Oh, my God. I'm going to my village. I put it there, and they'll come and hear the word of God in our own mother tongue. There are many people who've never got the opportunity to go to school. But by hearing this, their lives will be changed. Amen. Their lives are going to be changed. And we appreciate this. You see? Ah, I'm so happy. I'm so full of joy. Oh, my God. Lord, save my people. 
Father, when I shall carry this to my people, Lord, let them hear the gospel and touch their hearts to be saved in Jesus' name. Amen. Lord, touch my parents. Help them, Father, to come to you and to know you that you are the only true God and that we have salvation through Jesus Christ. Thank you, Lord, in Jesus' name. It's wonderful. Can you hear me? Okay. Can you pull up number three also? Is that available? Yeah. Southern Sudan is the youngest nation in this world, and the people of Sudan entered into this independence with great hope. But unfortunately, for the past five years, Southern Sudan has been riven by civil war. Um, because of this conflict, because of the war, the common man, the everyday man, is the one that has to pay the price. More than 400,000 people have died, and over 3.5 million people have been refugees. They have had to flee southern Sudan. The overwhelming majority of these people have come into Uganda. Those people that fled were mainly women and children. When we were there, it was re really obvious. You could see at least 70% of the population of Bidibidi are women and children. Some of them were giving up in life, having lost their relatives due to the war that's currently going on. It's a very big burden. They have lost hope, but the scriptures, they give a hope to them. There's such despair that you can see on the eyes of the people. But one thing I thank God for is the power of the Word of God. It is living and active. And we saw literally that the Word of God is able to transform the despair, to transform the hopelessness of these people into a hope that is beyond description. The Proclaimer has been such a wonderful tool in the lives of the refugees in the camps. The Word of God in your mother tongue can never be compared to anything else. We met people who literally hugged and held the proclaimers close to their heart and saying, this is my father, this is my mother, this is everything to me. Jesus is real. Lives are being impacted and they will continue being impacted because of that word. I was really impressed by their ability to trust God for anything, and they trust that God is able to handle the situation that they have. The scripture says, in this world you will have trouble, but I give you my peace that where I am, you may also be. It's a very big blessing. When they come, they listen together with their children. Mm -hmm. 
udah lo guna aja karena aku tuh kayaknya nalak yang ini ini dari dulu sate si Tani kata jiran yang itu apa nalak what involves people and what makes them get meaning in groups is the proclaimer karena gak mungkin deh ini aso gana aso gak jiran they seem to have a, a higher sensibility to the voice of God. A readiness, which you could actually see in their physical posture. We met people who could tell their story with a smile. How can you talk about losing everything you had and yet have a smile on your face? Because they have received something that is a greater value than everything that they had before. God is taking care of us and this is not going to last forever will come through this. I saw that aspect of hope that was brought by the audio scriptures. It has so much encouraged them. Such a powerful tool. Those are our national workers equipping nationals to take God's word to their people. Did you catch that at the end? That one section, they've, they've split this up into a number of sections. One section disbanded their police because rampant peace had broken out. Rampant peace in a refugee camp in today's, in today's world. It's an incredible, incredible journey. It also said at the end, a thousand more uh, programs were in development. Their goal is for every thousand people, they want to have one church plant in this bitty, bitty camp. And uh, a thousand more were in development. We actually uh, got those delivered last month in June before the country shut down again. A dear friend of mine has a ministry out of California, and he checked 68 bags on American Airlines to take proclaimers to, to Biddy Biddy. You imagine, I, that, that would be the guy I would always get in line behind, I think, at the airport. But uh, 68 bags, praise God, they got him through, they got him to the camp. And a testimony that just came out, one of the men who was a Muslim, who came to the Lord during uh, Faith Comes by Hearing Listen group. He, he is now one of our, our leaders, one of our facilitators. He's been trained by Faith Comes by Hearing to do listening groups. And a listening group is about 28 minutes, uh, listening to the Bible once a week for about 25, 30 minutes, and then discussing more of a discovery Bible study session on what you're hearing, who's in the story, what does it mean to you, now what are you going to do with that? So he went to sleep one night, and he said he uh, uh, had a dream that he needed to take a proclaimer to a village. He didn't know which village, and he just woke up the next morning following God's spirit and just started walking. And he started walking for hours and hours. He would go past a village, and no, that wasn't the village. He'd go to another village, didn't feel that that was the village. Finally went to a village and went up to a group of men. And they accepted him in, and he actually delivered the scriptures to them, started a listening group, and our team just went and visited it. And uh, over uh, the entire village has now been saved, has found the Lord, because this one man being woken in his dream to take the scripture that was given to him, that was supplied uh, months and months and years before, to take it to this village. And that just happened this past week. So we're, we're just rejoicing in all of that. 
Um, I said every, every time we do a recording, we do a gospel film. And, and you can access all of this on our website. And those of you in Facebook that maybe those videos didn't come across real clear, just go onto our website, faithcomesbyhearing.com. And you can see these videos. There's a whole section of that. And it talks more deeply about the gospel film. But we're also doing video watching groups as well, breaking it up into small groups, doing it online and in person with projectors. Now, you look up after 50 years in ministry, and you have the largest collection of Bibles in the world. And we call that the digital Bible platform. Think about it. We have over 1,478 Bibles warehoused, ready to be freely accessed by any ministry that just requests it. We will freely give it away to them. But over uh, the, the year 2020, we had a challenge. We couldn't get proclaimers out. So what did we do? We did online digital campaigns. And through our online digital campaigns, through Facebook, Facebook Live, uh, WhatsApp in Africa, we had over 190 million people have access that we could tell had access to the scriptures. Of their 190 million people that, that saw the ads, saw the Facebook ads or whatnot, 2.6 million people actually engaged in scripture online through their devices, through their phones. The majority of people access the internet now through their cell phones. Now, who brought your cell phone today? This is, this is participation. Yeah, it's not a trick. We're not going to take them from you. Okay. Um, and, and how many times in church do you, do, are you reminded, turn your phone off, don't let it go off, and you're all always worried about that. So today, I'm asking you to take your phones out and turn them on. Now, I've got a free gift for you. Who would like a free Bible today? Okay. Two of you. Okay. The rest of you. Um, you're going to get a free Bible today. How would you like 1,478 free Bibles today? What I want you to do is go to your phone and on Facebook Live, go to your, go to your computer or go to your phone, and we have an app. It's called Bible Is, B-I-B-L-E dot is. We need to rewrite that song. B-I-B-L-E dot is the app for me. Okay, so... Go to your phone, go to your app store, and load Bible Is. And while you're doing that, I'm going to share a couple of stories. I believe that the Great Commission, that everybody's going to hear the Word of God through two ways, through a cell phone and through Uber drivers. Okay? Everywhere I travel, the Uber drivers are usually internationals. And when I go to restaurants, I listen for accents, or I check into hotels. And wherever I go, it's usually a multicultural experience. And I'll always ask, that's an interesting accent. Where are you from? So a few years ago, I was in uh, Raleigh, North Carolina, and uh, going to meet with a ministry partner. And uh, me and a colleague, we jumped in an Uber. And he was taking us to our hotel. And, uh, and the man behind had that deep, gruff, African accent. And I looked at him and I, I said, hey, that's an interesting accent. Where are you from? And he said, New York. And I said, no, you're from a little further east than that. And he said, well, I'm from Africa. And I said, Africa is a beautiful continent. I love Africa. I've been there a number of times. Which country? And he looked at us and he said, well, guess. So we're already driving. I think, wow, this is a 15-minute Uber ride. Am I going to be able to present the gospel to him in this short time? So he, my colleague says, you know, you sound East African to me. And he goes, ah, oh, you're right. I'm from Somalia. He starts sharing that he'd come to the country. He's a Somali Muslim. You know, and we could just tell by his talk. And I said, so while he was talking, I went to my Bible is app. I went to languages. I went to his country first. Then I went to languages, and I found the Somali Bible, and I hit play. So what we are listening to is John 3.16 in Somali. 
So I turned on the Bible. You couldn't hear it very well. I apologize for that. I turned it on. I hit play. And I could see in the rearview mirror, his eyes got as big as saucers. And I thought, uh-oh, this is going to be really, really good or really, really bad. And he looked at me, and he goes, ah, oh, that's my language. He took both hands off the steering wheel, turned, and gave me a high five. And I thought, oh, Lord, this is the first time I've shared the gospel with a Somali Muslim, and you're going to take me home because we're going to drive right into that tree. So what happens when you start sharing the scripture to oral peoples, most peoples, what happens here in the United States, they start to translate it back to you in English for just a moment. Then oral people get lost in the story. They cannot separate themselves from a story. When we play a proclaimer in the field and they're listening to it, it's usually a first-person testimony. Ah, when I was on the street with Jesus, I saw my friend reach out to his robe. And he turned to her and said, ah, sister, by your faith, you've been saved. He, they enter the story. They can't get out of it because in their culture, anything needs to be memorized. They start memorizing it so they can repeat it when they get home. So he starts listening. So in silence, we're listening to the book of John. We get to the hotel, and, I, and we stop. And I said, what did you think about that? He goes, I like that. I go, would you like it for free? We have a little share button on there, and I can show you that after service. But you pull down the menu, and you hit share. And I said, give me your cell phone number. He gave me a cell phone number. Now, I've probably done this five, six hundred times. I don't know. I've lost count. On, and I've only been turned down twice for someone giving me their cell number. Okay? Think about how private of information that is for you. People probably give you their social security number before they give you a cell number anyway. So he gives me a cell phone number, and I text the link to him, and he puts it right on his phone. And he goes, I'm going to listen to this. I said, oh, that's wonderful. And he goes, let me tell you why. This is the first time in seven years I've heard my language spoken back to me. I went, oh. think about how lonely people are, how they want part of their home. But what we're doing is giving them the scripture in their mother tongue, their first language, and they can export it back to their countries, closed countries to the gospel. We're seeing that over and over and over every time we do this. So now, you have that Bible app loaded on your phone. I also have some of these cards out in the lobby. So two ways you can do this. You can, if you got time, get their cell phone number, text it to them. Now, what I did two days later with this man... I had his cell phone number, and I texted him a message. It just simply was, what did you think of the, about the Bible? And he goes, I like it. I'm still listening to it. So I texted him a link to one of the churches I knew in the area. And I said, well, if you have any questions, please contact my friend at this church, and here's, here's their link. Now, I challenge you. You know, we think about the Great Commission, and it's always go and make disciples. So we have to all get in a, in a bus, then we have to go to the airport, and we have to fly 3,000 miles around the world to go and make disciples. There's another English translation I like that I think is a little more accurate. It's as you are going, make disciples. So as you're going to lunch today, as you're going to watch your grandchildren play soccer, as you're going to the market, Share the gospel. You have the greatest track, I think, ever built right in the palm of your hand now. Over 1,400 languages. The majority of the languages um, we have already completed. But Lord willing, these remaining 4,000 languages we'll be able to do in a few years. So I'd like to finish with one little story, if I can. How am I doing on time, Barbara? We're doing fine? Okay, good. She said, just talk until you run out of talking time, so, but I don't want to get in, a, in, the, mo in the way of our lunch. Okay. So 7,000 languages in the world. We've had over 30 million people this past year download the Bible Is app. Now 30 million and 500, however many are on Facebook Live for your church, okay? But what we want to do is deliver the scriptures freely and available. But you know what? We've got a problem. So there's, uh, I was in West Africa, in Sierra Leone, and, uh, and uh, a real dear friend of mine, Reverend Shadonke Johnson, has a great church planting movement. And he was sharing about, uh, uh, you know, Africans, they always like to talk in stories and whatnot. And his story was about an elephant and a hunter. 
the hunter, this group of pygmies, you know pygmies, little pygmies? They would go out and they'd hunt in their village. And they would go out and hunt and hunt and hunt. And there was one pygmy that was the greatest hunter of them all. And he would be the one that would always be able to throw his spear and get the kill. And, but as they would bring their, their animals back into the village, all of the pygmy hunters would be singing a song. Look at the animal we have killed. Look at the animal we have killed. Look at the animal we have killed. Well, this one man, he would get rage. He would say, no, I killed it. So he said, I'm going to show them. So one day he went out one night and he dug a big pit and he put little spikes in it and he was going to get the greatest animal of them all in their jungle, the elephant. So he put it in the trowel that would go down to the water. So sure enough, he built the pit, dug it all night. An elephant in the morning came down and fell in the pit. And he was like, ha, ah, I got the elephant. But guess what? He's got an elephant in the hole. He's got it in the pit. We, in the Bible cause, our elephant is the 7,000 people groups, the remaining 2,000 that have no access to Scripture, and we need help. The Bible translators, they got, they got one of the ropes. The donors, they have another rope. Faith comes by hearing, and other ministries, we have a rope. But the church needs to be a part of this to get this pit out. So what they were doing, these picnics, they'd start pulling. Look at the elephant we have killed. Look at the elephant we have killed. Look at the elephant we have killed. And the man got rage again, and he jumped on the elephant and fell back down. None of us right now are doing this by ourselves. We need everybody's help to complete this by the year 2033. And it's an exciting time. No other time in history have all of the Bible translation agencies been at the same table. All of the scripture engagement ministries, us and Jesus Film and others, are all at the same table. Churches are coming around. Interdenomination churches are coming around for the great commission to be completed in our lifetime. And my challenge to you, you can be a part of this. You know, pray. Pray for this. This is a huge God-sized task. It cannot be done without the prayers of the saints. Give if you can give. Support your favorite Bible translator or favorite uh, scripture use ministry like Faith Comes by Hearing. Support your church so they can continue to send missionaries around the world and support the missionaries that are already um, using these resources. And our plans are to resource your missionaries around the world with proclaimers. We don't have missionaries at Faith Comes by Hearing. We only work through partnership, as I said, over 4,000 ministry partners, or over 400 ministry partners and over 40,000 churches around the world we partner with. And we believe the Great Commission was actually given to the church. It wasn't given to parachurch ministries. So all we want to do is resource you to do the Great Commission. So you have your app loaded? Everybody have your apps loaded? This is homework. Because Pastor Barbara is going to call you out next week and tell, ask you how many people you have shared with. And you know what? It's fun. I've, I've challenged some college, college groups, and they'll go out, and they'll jump in Ubers, and they'll go out and do it. The, the, the kids over in Kona on, in YWAM, they, that's their number one tool. They go out there wherever they go around the world, and they have these, these audio Bibles. But, you know, we have all sorts of resources, micro SD cards. We can even put, uh, put it up on satellites and deliver the scripture. This is all tech. And those of you, and Pastor Barbara was saying the other night, you young people that are graduating college or high school even, have a have a knack for for digital and 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 social media we have a whole social media team that works at the ministry um and any way anything you think engineers you know and then uh those of us that are ending our our professional work life and ready for retirement i've looked in the bible and i haven't seen the word retirement in there and i went from all through 66 books and there's no retirement in the bible so those of us that are getting ready to get to that stage of life you can continue serving the lord in many ways but i just want to challenge you to grab that piece of the rope and help us pull the great commission out of that hole we can get it done by the year 2033 if you think about it lord willing and I, I think it may go faster than that you know we pray that the lord will return but you know he's patient he's kind he's waiting for the last one to hear and then those trumpets are going to call 
and call, call his church home. And that, that's our prayer, is to just continue keeping our hand on the plow, keep doing what God has told our ministry to do, and that is to record every single Bible and make it freely available by any means possible, leveraging all this technology that's been created around us. We're leveraging trillions of dollars of technology that we didn't have to come up with at our little ministry in Albuquerque, New Mexico, um, for the last 50 years. Go ahead and pray. Yeah. So, as Pastor Barbara comes up. I just want to lead us in prayer. And, and if any of you have felt called, called into missions, called to do something, um, God's kind of prompted you today, please feel free to come up and we'd love to pray with you. And probably most important, if any of you and on Facebook, if you have not accepted the Lord Jesus Christ as your Lord and Savior, don't let another day go by. Don't wait for tomorrow because tomorrow may never be. So let's pray. Father God, I just want to thank you. Thank you for this time that we get to spend here this morning and worshiping you. Thank you that we get to, that you did give us a guidebook, the Bible, years and years ago, thousands of years ago, to, to, to guide our lives. I pray that those of us that have now downloaded the Bible would just make a part of their daily plan to even listen to it for 15, 20 minutes a day, to, to just get into your word and to hear from you. And Lord, if, I do pray today that as we go, as we are going, that you would put people in our paths that don't know you. I think about the waitress the other day when uh, we were at lunch and the pastor Barbara took the time to find out who, who, if she had God in her heart and to pray with her and to bring her an, an invitation to come to church. It's simple, but sometimes we just get too busy to remind what you put us here for. There is no plan B. God, you gave the great commission to the church, and I thank you for that. So those of you that are, are just feeling that maybe, maybe you're called into the mission field or called to support, definitely we're all called to pray for this. Um, Lord, let today to be today. And Lord, is there anyone in this room that does not know you personally? Please come. Come today. Those of you online, please put a comment that you want more prayer, that you would like someone to reach out to you and explain how you can become a child of God and put your trust in Jesus. So to, today, Lord, just go before us in all that we do, and I thank you in Jesus' name. Thank you, Brother Scott, and I pray that you're all ex as excited as I am. Went to a restaurant the other day, a Thai restaurant, because they like hot food. And the waitress was there. She was so kind. And when we talked to her, Scott had her download this Bible Is app, and she heard the gospel. I said, this is a track. Instead of the paper track, we hear all kinds. Those of you are Korean, Filipino, what you do is have them download it or show them this and you find the country they came from, and then they have the dialects. You can hear the Bible in your own dialect. Those of you who have to listen to English and you're tired of listening to English, you can listen to it yourself, and then you can pass it on. I am just so excited about this, and the reason why Scott came, and I want to thank Paul, our brother Paul. He had heard uh, this program on John Anchorbird's show, he got excited and he said, you know what, I don't have any, I, I wanted my grandchildren to carry the gospel and be missionaries because I'm getting old, but they're in other things and he wanted to leave a legacy behind so that even after he goes, if Jesus doesn't come soon, uh, he will have this passed out. And so he's invested money in it. Uh, he didn't want to leave it in the bank, he said. He wanted to leave it doing something for God. And so that's why Scott came at his invitation and context. We want to thank Paul. And there might be others of you who are reaching retirement age and maybe you've got a lot of money stored up. Well, what about investing something too and leaving it to carry on your life and your ministry and your message? I pray God's blessings upon you. 
Those of you in Facebook, if you'd like more information, you can go to their website or contact us. Let us all stand and let's say a prayer for those who have heard this gospel today. And if you don't know Jesus, just say the simple prayer. Dear Jesus, thank you for loving me just the way I am. Thank you for knowing my name. Thank you for seeing my pain. I confess that I'm a sinner and I cannot save myself. Thank you for dying on the cross and taking the penalty for my sins. Please forgive me of my sins. I invite you to come into my heart and become my Lord and Savior. Write my name in your book of life. Thank you. Fill me with your Holy Spirit. Thank you for this new life I have. In Jesus' name, amen. And Father, for everyone who sincerely said that prayer, I pray that the burden of sin will be lifted, that the scars will be healed, that new life will be poured in, and that they will truly know that they are born again into the kingdom of God, and now God is their Father. So take care of them. Bless us, Lord, as we dismiss from this service. Help us, Lord, to live this day as a blessing to you and to others and bring us back safely again this evening at 6. In Jesus' name, amen. We're going to close with this song, but come back at 6 because um, Scott is going to share his personal testimony a little bit and maybe some other things. So come back tonight at 6. God bless you. Have a good, restful afternoon. Sing it as we leave. Love you all on Facebook. See you again tonight. God bless you. I go home prepared for the saints of I just over in the glory land. And I long to be by my Savior's side just over in the glory land. Just over in the glory land I'll join the happy angel band Just over in the glory land Just over in the glory land There with the mighty old spouse stand Just over in the glory land With the blood washed strong I will shout and sing Just over in the glory land Glad Hosanna's to Christ the Lord and King Just over in the glory land Just over in the glory land I'll join the happy angel then Just over in the glory land Just over in the glory land There with the mighty host I'll stand Just over in the glory land. God bless you. Jesus may come before tonight. Stay ready. Love you all. Bye-bye.